it's Corey, and today you're gonna learn how to play Before He Cheats by Carrie Underwood. In total, this song is in its original key, so you can play along with the recording, and it only has six chords. I would put all of the pieces that make this song together into a slightly advanced beginner, but not intermediate song at all. If you're a brand new player, you might find this a little difficult, but with practice, you'll have it in no time. So let's get started. The first chord you're gonna need to play the song is an A major. Now we only play this one time in the song during the bridge section, but it's still important to know because it adds a lot of contrast and variety to this tune. To make the E major, you're going to take your first finger, place it on the first fret, third string, and then take your second finger and place it on the second fret, fourth string. Next up, we have the B7. This is also a chord that you're only playing one time in this song during the bridge section, but like with the A major, it's really important because it adds that color and variety and contrast. To make the B7, you're going to take your first finger, place it on the second fret, second string. Your second finger is going to go on the third fret, third string. And your third finger is going to go on the fourth fret, fourth string. Next we have the C sharp seven. While this might sound like an intimidating chord because of the name, it's actually pretty easy to play. First, you're gonna take your first finger and bar all across the strings on fret one. You're then gonna take your second finger and place that on top because that will give you extra support in order to make all the strings sound correctly. Then you're gonna take your third finger and place that on the first string, second fret, and then you have your C sharp seven. Next up, we have the D major chord, and this is going to take place all on the second fret here. So you're gonna take your first finger and then place it on the fourth string. Your second finger is gonna go on the third string, and then your third finger is gonna go on the second string. For this one, you wanna make sure your thumb is behind the second fret, and you're gonna feel as if you're coming down on the chord. Don't let the neck of the ukulele rest on your palm or on the side of your finger. After that, we have the dreaded E major chord. I have a couple ways that you can play this on a video on my channel, and that's in my ukulele basics playlist. My favorite way to play the E major is what I'm going to show you now. First, taking your first finger, place it on the first string, second fret. Then you're gonna go down to the fourth fret, and you're gonna use strings four, three, and two. You're gonna take your second finger and place it on the fourth string. Then your third finger is gonna go on the third string, and then your fourth finger is gonna go on the second string. I'm placing my thumb right behind the second fret that way it's going to give some extra support and then you have your E major and lastly we have the F sharp minor F sharp minor actually shares the same positioning as the G7 chord it's just over a string so if you already know G7 F sharp minor is gonna be really easy for you you're gonna take your first finger place it on the first fret third string, then your second finger is going to go on the second fret fourth string, and your third finger is going to go on the second fret second string. I'm placing my thumb behind my first fret to give extra support. And then you have your F sharp minor. So for this song, it's really important that you get incredibly familiar with all these chords. If you can't play them without looking directly at the chord chart, you're not at the point where you're ready to move on. You wanna make sure that you have them memorized well enough that maybe if it's been a few days and you need a little reminder of what the chord looks like, then use the chord chart. However, if you're playing through and you're finding that you're frequently looking up the chord chart in order to play these chords, take a pause and just practice your chords. Once you are comfortable with it, it's time to take a look at our starting patterns. What we're gonna do is starting with the intro section, we're going to introduce our main strumming pattern for the song. We're gonna use this strumming pattern for our verses as well. Demonstrated on an F sharp minor is just a down, 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 down up. For this tune, we'll actually be playing this to the subdivision of the song rather than the beat of the song. So if I'm going down, 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 up, I'm then going to switch to my next chord. In this case, it's an E major. Down, 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 up. But each of that down, 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 up is actually only two beats. Now, if you want, you can think of your down, 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 down as the beat of the song, but just know it's actually the subdivision. So you'll be switching every two beats for most of the chords in this song, or if it's easier for you to remember, you're switching every strumming pattern 
for the chords. There are a few cases where that's not the case. An example of this would be like the B7 at the end of the verse section or the C sharp seven in the chorus sections. Those are actually gonna be played over a full four beats or to you, if you're thinking in terms of subdivision, you'll feel it like eight beats. To demonstrate what this strumming pattern is going to sound like with the intro, this is what our intro section is. One, two, here we go. And When I got to that C sharp seven, I just played a single down strum and let it ring before what would become our verse one. That's pretty common in this song. So you'll see that a lot in the play along. And I just notate that by having a single slash and that indicates that you're just playing a single down strum there until your next chord. So it's basically shifting from playing a strumming pattern to just playing on the chord change. We're gonna continue that down, 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 down up all throughout the verse. The only thing that will change here is when we get to the final C sharp seven, we're going to just play for eight down strums or playing on the subdivision, which will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Build this up, have a little crescendo. So start a little quieter of which you're going to want to do for the verses anyway, because then you can have these big moments in the chorus, but gradually get louder as you're strumming over time. So that would sound like this. For the chorus, we have a different strumming pattern. This strumming pattern played on a D major is going to be a down, down, up, chuck, down. If you can't do a chuck, don't worry about it. Just do a down, down, up, down, down, and that's fine too. In this case, again, we're changing chords about every two beats here, but if it's easier for you to think of, we're changing chords every strumming pattern. The only time that will be different is with your C sharp sevens, you'll be playing that for a full four beats, or in the case because you're just playing on down strums, you'll be playing for eight times each on those, and that's all notated in the song sheet. And then on the final F sharp minor of the chorus before we have our little interlude into verse two, that will also be for four beats. Once you have the strumming pattern of the verse, that down, 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 up, and the strumming pattern for the chorus of down, down, up, chuck, down. The only strumming pattern you're gonna really need to know about for the rest of this song would be during the bridge section. Now the bridge is really easy because you're just playing on the subdivision until you get back to that intro section that is at the end of the bridge. So it's really all repeated material and nothing new for you. The rest of the song is just putting together these different pieces in order to create the whole song. So let's give it a play along. One, two, here we go. And
next time that he cheats Oh, you know it won't be on me this tutorial for Before He Cheats by Carrie Underwood. If there are other tunes of Carrie Underwood's that you'd like and you'd like to see them made in tutorial or a play along, make sure to like this video and then also comment that down below. That way I know what kind of content you'd like to see. Otherwise, if you're looking for the song sheet for this song or any of my other play alongs and tutorials, I keep all that on my Patreon and you can find the link for that in the description box below. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye! Probably up behind her with a pool stick showing her how to shoot.